here. Joining us today is Tevi Troy, president of the American Health Policy Institute and former deputy secretary for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Tevi, it's always great to have you with us here at America's Forum. Thanks for having me. All right, so we heard uh, about the, the, the concerns about possibly weaponizing Ebola here. This is also something that you're talking about, a number of other issues. You have a new piece out in the Wall Street Journal today, but tell us what your main concern is at this point about Ebola. Yeah, my main concern is actually not about the, we the weaponization. Uh, it's not that easy to do. Obviously, if it did happen, it, it's, it's terrible. My main concern is that the uh, thus far uncontrolled spread in Western Africa could spiral beyond Africa. There's already 2,400 dead in, in Africa. Epidemiologists say it may be larger than that. And I, I'm also concerned that the, that the world was a little slow to respond on this one and that we need faster detection systems in order to be able to jump on these things more quickly in the future. Yeah, I mean, we've been hearing about it for a while now, and it doesn't really seem like there's a lot of containment over there uh, in West Africa. You mentioned you're not as concerned about the weaponization. It's very difficult to do, but what would it take without giving a blueprint on how to do it? You know, what are some of the obstacles now that would prevent this from happening? Uh, well, wait, what would the, I really don't want to, you know, give that's, anybody... That, I, I mean, I think that's, but, uh, that's, that's probably but, uh, fair. The, 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 the challenge with weaponization is distribution. So if you put something that's airborne, and uh, Ebola is not an airborne virus, let me stress, stress that, but something airborne, then the wind uh, spreads it out. And if you do it in a building, well, then it's contained to the building. And so uh, it, it's just not that easy to to create a pathogen that, that you can uh, spread to thousands upon, uh, thousands upon thousands of people. Uh, Trevi, the president announced he's going to send um, 3,000 military personnel to West Africa. What role do you think that, this is, that they are going to play uh, in West Africa? Well, look, the U.S. military is very good at um, logistics, at setting up camps, at establishing uh, a, a sanitary conditions. Um, and, uh, and, and helping provide the, the support that, that the folks need. Obviously, we want to protect our troops and make sure that they are, um, uh, they're, they're behind protective gear, uh, but they can help distribute the, the medicines. Uh, you know, a good model of what the U.S. has been able to do um, in terms of uh, stopping diseases is, let's say, the PEPFAR program, where we distributed um, lots of countermeasures to, uh, to, to the AIDS virus that, that was rapidly spreading throughout uh, Africa. It's a, you know, it's a different type disease, of course, but, um, but the fact is that U.S. has a lot of resources that, that, that they can help, that they can use to help spread these things before they get out of control. Well, Tevi, as you mentioned in the onset of this interview, uh, Dr. Kent Brantley also agrees with you. He, of course, is the survivor of Ebola. He testified yesterday in front of a joint hearing of Congress about the crisis. Here's what he had to say. Many, including one of the senators today, use the analogy of a fire burning out of control to describe this unprecedented Ebola outbreak. Indeed, it is a fire. It is a fire straight from the pit of hell. We cannot fool ourselves into thinking that the vast moat of the Atlantic Ocean will protect us from the flames of this fire. Instead, we must move quickly and immediately to deliver the promises that have been made and to be open to practical, innovative interventions. This is the only way to keep entire nations from being reduced to ashes. Well, Tevi, if anybody is qualified to talk about the concern of Ebola, it is Dr. Kent Brantley, who's seen it firsthand and also has been infected with the disease. Do you think what he said, in addition to what the president yesterday, yesterday that there's enough uh, motivation now to really tackle this crisis in the way it needs to be handled? Uh, well, well, first let me laud Dr. Brantley for his uh, selfless work, uh, really putting himself on the line in, in ways that uh, I don't think people anticipated before he, he got this, this deadly disease, and I'm glad he, he survived. Uh, I, I think the fact that the president went to CDC and gave the speech and Dr. Brantley's testimony and, uh, means that this, uh, this condition is now getting the attention that it deserves and hopefully the resources that, that it deserves. Um, I don't think this should be an all-America issue, though. I, I think there were some failures on the part of the World Health Organization, for example. Uh, I'd like to see a more international body that could step up in times of these uh, crises. And, uh, and again, I, I don't think it all has to be on America's shoulders, but I think America does have a role to play. David, the United Nations said the response to the crisis would require about $987.8 million. But we've heard other reports say it's a billion dollar fight. So about how much do you think it will actually cost the U.S. to fight this crisis? Well, it looks like the U.S. has already committed uh, at least 150 to 200 million, if not more, for this. Uh, the World Health Organization a, a couple of uh, months ago was talking about how they needed something like 150 million to combat it. And I suspect that if we had 
uh, if, if the World Health Organization and European partners had stepped up back then, then perhaps we wouldn't have to be spending as much now. So uh, I, I think I'd rather see uh, the, the investments up front rather than uh, spending much larger amounts, uh, amounts when it spirals out of control. Yeah, Tevi, also, uh, you know, Doctors Without Borders, they've criticized the uh, UN for their lack of plan here. Um, you know, we're looking at a big dollar amount here, but what else can be done at this point? You know, we've seen this global effort here, but, you know, folks st still here at home are concerned right now that this might come. Is, is there anything that folks should do other than just pay attention and uh, listen in on what's taking place? Yeah, it, it's, it's a kind of a weird situation in that the odds of it spreading in the U.S. at this point are relatively low, but it is a really problematic situation. So on the one hand, you want people to be appropriately concerned, but you don't want people panicking in the streets or flooding the emergency room, rooms here. If they have a cold, they think they have Ebola. So uh, I, I think this is the kind of thing that needs to uh, be handled abroad before it becomes a problem here, and I think that's the approach that I, I would stress. Uh, Tevi, last but not least here, I want to ask you, this is clearly a case of global security as opposed to regional security, and that's what we're hearing here. You, you would agree then that the international community does need to act fast. I've got about 20 seconds left, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. The, the international community needs to act fast, but also they need to think about how to deal with these things in the future. Uh, we need better detection, better development of countermeasures, and better logistical command and control to, uh, to deal with these issues in globally, but also if they should pop up in the U.S. in the future. All right. Well, Tevi, we thank you very much for your time here. We hope that Congress got the word yesterday. Tevi Troy, the president of the American Health Policy Institute. Always great to have him here with us on America's Forum. We have much more ahead for you here on the show today. And, of course, we'll check back in with J.D. periodically throughout the course of this program and get his updates. We'll have more ahead here on America's Forum right after this short commercial break.